Hi, I'm Keelan Earhart. I'm Ilona Cho. I'm Jenna Bartolotti. And I'm Brandon Jackson. We are the Syracuse Orange case study team, and today we'll be sharing our initial ideas and recommendations for how to increase Cole's relevancy within the 18 to 24 year old demographic. I'd like to begin with answering the question, who are millennials? Millennials are highly educated, career driven, politically progressive, and despite popular belief, do indeed develop strong brand loyalty when presented with quality products and actively engaged by brands. Um, the 18 to 24 year old demographic falls in this category. As millennials ourselves, we've um, approached this case study with personal preferences, expectations, and experiences that we have had with retailers, as well as researching successful strategies that have been um, well received by the target demographic of other retailers. My team will go further into how to attract millennials to the Coles brand with recommendations on how to begin, build, and maintain a relationship with them. Here's Ilona to begin discussing how to begin the relationship. Thanks. So as Brandon mentioned, we think a key in successfully attracting millennials is to begin, build, maintain um, a strong customer retailer relationship. We believe it's very important to start this relationship from a younger age, meaning we should target the younger section of the millennial demographic, meaning college age students from 18 to 20. So one easy way to do this is through college campuses. Modeling. Uh, this idea after Bed Bath & Beyond, we believe that Kohl's, the implementation of Kohl's pop-up shops and university school, uh, school centers and bookstores would uh, directly connect us to our target demographic. So Bed Bath & Beyond uh, places pop-up shops in multiple um, university bookstores and student centers each fall to allow um, each student, uh, invite students to check out merchandise um, close on their campus. Um, the products in, the, in these shops include um, dorm, dorm necessities like um, desk toppers, calendars, and um, bedding, but also include other home goods for apartment style living like kitchenware, uh, utensils, pots and pans, and things of those sort. I personally went uh, to the Bed Bath & Beyond pop-up shop at Syracuse um, my freshman year to get like a door decoration or something along those lines. Um, but these products would vary um, based on the school, because different schools have different setups, meaning some schools, uh, students live in dorms while others live in off-campus apartments, so um, the product selection would really vary there. So another um, aspect um, that Bed Bath & Beyond really does successfully is providing students with a check sheet of um, possible products that they may need uh, for the semester to come. So these lists, which are sometimes customized uh, to the school, provide students with a list of what they need and where they can get them. So we think we could use this model to also advertise uh, the products that we have at these um, pop-up stores while also uh, bringing more attention to the fact that it's right there on campus. So it's somewhat of um, like advertising while also like building that relationship. So we think that the check sheet would be very successful in beginning the relationship with a consumer because it um, makes the buying experience a lot easier, but also instills this uh, idea of need recognition for mis miscellaneous items that they might not have thought that they needed, which is um, a marketing tactic that Bed Bath & Beyond has really shown to be successful. Um, so we, the point or the main goal for these pop-up shops and um, check sheets is to really begin the relationship um, with the consumer from a younger age so that once they have graduated and are searching for a store to furnish their apartment or home, uh, Kohl's is really the retailer that comes first to mind. So as we mentioned, we'll be modeling these pop-up stores after the Bed Bath & Beyond model, but there's one difference that we really think is important to point out. Um, Bed Bath & Beyond really focuses on private universities with higher income students, um, but we think Kohl's would be most successful in targeting public universities with more lower to um, middle income students who are shopping more in the Kohl's price point. So we think um, state schools such as uh, the SUNYs and schools along those lines would be more of our target audience compared to private universities like Syracuse and Brown and schools of those sorts. Um, we also think by um, uh, using coupons and advertisements um, for like our low prices and price cuts would really drive students to come um, to our pop-up stores. Um, 
We also think that by playing up the fact that it's a short-term event, like the pop-up store won't be there the rest of the semester, would really create an excitement around the pop-up store. So we think that this, uh, the idea of a pop-up shop will be both profitable and inexpensive, inexpensive. Uh, profitable mostly because of the centralized location. Students are more likely to go to a store on their campus just because it's convenient rather than drive a few miles out of the way to go to a competitor like Target or Bed Bath & Beyond. We think it would be an, an, an inexpensive option because pop-up stores um, create um, a somewhat symbiotic relationship with their universities because they increase volume of traffic to the bookstore or the student center where they're located. We also believe this is a fi financially feasible um, concept because it's um, creating this symbiotic relationship, meaning that hopefully rental and uh, space costs would be minimized because um, student centers and bookstores would want us to be there to just increase the flow of traffic. And we could also um, potentially have no salary or other operating costs if we chose to operate through bookstore employees. But some important costs to consider are uh, rent, if that um, is decided upon, um, inventory or merchandise that we're selling there, supplies and setup costs, and uh, marketing or advertising. But these costs would all vary from school to school, um, but overall we think it would be a, a very profitable investment. So here's Jenna to discuss how we uh, will continue to build the relationship with our customer. Thank you. So the athleisure trend is more popular than ever and shows absolutely no signs of slowing down. Millennials love the idea of being able to wear comfortable gym clothes even if they don't end up going to the gym all day. Even in 10 to 15 years, millennials will still be investing in athleisure wear because it's not just a fad but rather a lifestyle. In an article from USA Today, the U.S. activewear market hit $35 billion in sales in the 12 months ending in October of 2014, an 8% increase over 2013. The NPD Group, a market research company, reports workout clothing now represents 17% of the total market clothing market. Sales of tailored pants and jeans have declined. So although Kohl's currently carries athletic wear, we think that they should start their own licensed private label athleisure brand to incorporate more trendy and wear all day styles than merely just functional athletic wear. Um, introducing a pri licensed private label athleisure brand would not only allow Kohl's to control the margin, but also better connect with millennials that strive to be the next Kendall Jenner, Gigi Hadid, which are two high profile celebrity models that are always wearing athleisure wear. The athleisure apparel should be targeted, targeted at young millennial women because they are the market that is really um, in fully invested in this trend. And the athleisure brand carried at Kohl's should be similar to that of Fabletics, which is Kate Hudson's online-only athleisure brand, meaning that it should um, contain trendy, sleek styles that come in different colors and patterns, as well as maintaining a low price point. And one way to specifically um, ma maintain this low price point and attract the price-conscious millennial is to maybe do a, bum a bundle where you buy a pair of pants and you get a top for maybe half off. So the athleisure brand should have a celebrity sponsor just like the Lauren Conrad brand to attract the attention of this new category of athletic wear. Uh, and one suggestion we thought would be to have Demi Lovato be that celebrity sponsor just because she's very open about sending the right message about being healthy and fit. The licensed private label athleisure brand would initially be a large investment, but because Kohl's would be able to con better control the margin on the line and the athleisure trend is rapidly growing and turning itself into more of a lifestyle than a trend, Kohl's would be able to generate a great return on their investment in a short period of time. So now that we have these pop-up stores and relationships with college campuses, as well as a new exciting brand that relates to our customer base, the question is how do we keep this momentum going? And that answer is through social media. Social media is huge, especially among millennials, and this is a trend that can only become more popular. There are two platforms that we think Kohl's should focus on to maintain this relationship, Instagram and Snapchat. Currently, Kohl's posts on Instagram almost every day, featuring chic looks and home products that one can find in a store. Along with this, users are given the option to shop the look through the like to buy option in the bio of the Instagram account. 
While we think that this is a great location for the link, we also think that shopping the Instagram account should be a tab on the Kohl's website. This could generate traffic from the website to the Like to Buy site, giving it more exposure and allowing users to see how to pair certain articles of clothing together. We think that this is a small, feasible change that could pay off. But what I'd like to focus on now is Snapchat. According to a study done by Mashable and college students, 77% of them use Snapchat daily. Another 58% of them said that they would be likely to purchase a product if sent a coupon on Snapchat. We believe that Snapchat would be a great opportunity to attract millennial customers across the country to Kohl's through three ways. The use of My Story and Geo filters, coupons, as well as purchasing an ad spot as a Discover Like That Kohl's Day. There are two ways that Kohl's could use My Story to help promote or launch a product and to keep customers engaged in store with the use of Geo filters. Kohl's would be able to promote any product that they wish through their MyStory, basically doing their own advertisements, and could also use the MyStory to help launch a product and build hype surrounding it by posting pictures from the collection. The MyStory could also be used as a way to, to keep customers engaged and involved in the Life at Kohl's conversation. Kohl's can make it so that when someone is shopping in a Kohl's store, they are able to submit Snapchats to the Kohl's MyStory. Maybe a Snapchat of a cool display that they found while shopping in the store, or maybe a great new outfit that they just found and want to show off to whoever is following the Kohl's account. Kohl's could also add geo filters to their store locations so that when someone is in a store and snapping a picture to friends, they can choose a geo filter that says Kohl's, which would help in free advertisement of the store. Moving on, Snapchat could also be used as a way to distribute coupons. Upon arriving in a store, there could be a picture advertisement where if someone takes a picture of the ad and sends it to a special Kohl's Snapchat account, they are snapped back with a coupon that they can use upon checkout. We think this would be feasible as it could probably be done through an automatic process so that someone isn't constantly monitoring the Snapchat account. We also think that this is a way to stop showrooming. Now more than ever, showrooming seems to dominate the retail shopping experience because of the amount of information we have available at our fingertips and our ability to find deals elsewhere in an instant. By sending someone a coupon on Snapchat, this is an incentive for them to purchase something while in the store because they wouldn't know their savings until they got to the register. Snapchats expire after a maximum of 10 seconds, so to use the coupon, the customer would have to wait to open up the Snapchat while checking out to find out how much they saved, whether it be 10% to 30% off their total purchase. This is taking that idea of a scratch off that the moms love so much and translating it into something that would be effective for the tech savvy social media using millennial. Lastly, we think that all of these investments could culminate in Kohl's investing in having a Discover Day on Snapchat. This is an advertising spot that shows up on everyone's Snapchat for 24 hours. Through having to discover life at Kohl's Day, this allows Kohl's to reach those 77% of college students mentioned earlier that use Snapchat daily. Kohl's could use this day to show a few things, from the welcoming, friendly environment in a Kohl's store to new products and great looks on the floor, all the way to customer experiences by once again having customers submit Snapchats to the Discover Life at Kohl's story. A coupon that could be screenshotted could be thrown in the Discover Life at Kohl's story as well to encourage users to come into a store to shop. This would be a costly investment. However, we think it is an opportunity to look into as a return on the investment may be worth it from the amount of users seeing the content. Snapchat has only just started taking off and is something relatively new in the world of advertisement. We think that if Kohl's invested in using the social media platform that they could generate more excitement among millennials to come in and shop at the store and would be able to maintain this newfound relationship that they've started with the group. In conclusion, we believe the implementation of pop-up stores at public universities is the best opportunity to begin a relationship with the target demographic and increase Kohl's relevancy for them. This type of brand loyalty would ideally remain for the next five to ten years when consumers are looking to shop for their apartments, homes, and even their children. Also, with freshman students not being able to drive, this also creates a new level of convenience for the bottom of the age demographic and is a great start to building the relationship. As for reaching another smaller segment of the key demographic, we strongly recommend the implementation of a licensed private athleisure brand that would provide great style and quality with more appealing prices to young female millennials who are now more financially conscious than ever. The rapid increase in popularity of athleisure wear has created an opportunity for Colts to really capitalize on something that's not just a fad, but a growing lifestyle. And finally, to take advantage of the now most powerful form of marketing for this age group, we would love to see Colts tap into the many types of social media Instagram and Snapchat in particular. 
The ease of sharing photos of new clothes or promos and coupons using geofilters or discovery allows for an extremely agile medium of creating brand awareness and beginning that relationship. relationship. Millennials are known to feel validated and engage with the community when they receive likes or shares for their posts, especially when they're the first to review a product or give shopping advice to friends. We are the Syracuse Orange Case Study Team, and we thank you for your time and this opportunity to give our first recommendations and initial ideas to help increase Kohl's relevancy to the 18 to 24 year old demographic.